All right, so number 30, the sea duds. Yeah. I always try to explain to people what Seahawks football was like in the 90s. I, I would I would say, you mean the era where I couldn't give away one of my tickets when I had season tickets? <laughs> like, I, people literally found better things to do. And they didn't even make up lame excuses like I have to wash my hair. They just say like, nah, man, yeah, I've no. got better things to do with my time. I don't think but so. I could tell what we were running by the depth of Chris Warren in the backfield. I'm pretty damn sure the Chiefs or the freaking Broncos can too. Yeah. Oh, it was brutal. <laughs> It was but painful, if, Josh. But if you look at the quarterbacks from that oh. era, after Dave Craig, so I think Dave Craig played until, what, 1991 here or something like that? Yeah. And moved on to the Chiefs, I believe it was. But <laughs> the list of quarterbacks who came after Dave Craig is so long and so painful. I mean, it's bad because essentially before that, you had Jim Zorn. And you had Dave Craig. Those were like our quarterbacks, yeah, we right? Kind of we had, Think yeah. of how amazing that is, by the way. Like, that's we were Jeff Kent pretty... filling in on a pinch. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's a couple of flickers of bright spots within this list, but basically, it's it's pretty painful. Yeah. So, <laughs> essentially, this entire list, this entire number thirty C duds list, is all about the quarterbacks who followed Dave Craig. So, you had Jeff Kemp and Cali Stauffer. And again, I, her. Good Lord. I just want to like point out too, it, it's not about, I mean, obviously these guys are major talents because they made it to the NFL in the first place. But once you get to the NFL, man, it is a different league. It is, this is where the big boys play. Yeah. And some people, well, they just don't pan out. And there is a long list of people that did not pan out for the Seahawks during this era. So... Next up came Mark McGuire's little brother, or big brother. I mean, gosh, he was huge. Remember this guy? Remember the hype on this guy, Ethan? He was like 6'8". Oh, yeah. I think San Diego State? Was that where he was? Yeah, yeah, San Diego player? State. Yeah. He, like, he had one of those like like uh, sunglass visors. He like looked hella cool. He's like, well, this yeah. guy's cool. He looks kind of like a, he's kind of like RoboCop. <laughs> he's out there throwing the ball. I'm like, damn, this guy's going to be awesome. Nope, nope. He didn't turn out to be anything. It's all a cunning lie. Yeah. And he was actually drafted ahead of Brett Favre at number 16 wow. in the first Let's round. Let's continue to rub <laughs> this in, sure. <laughs> yeah, so I think he ended up actually playing 12 games in four seasons. So, yeah, that's how he turned out. You remember Stan the Man Gelba? Good Lord, yeah, from the World League of Football. I think he played for, like, the London Monarchs or something. But yeah, right. He was actually good, <laughs> uh, you know, up in college. I think he actually broke Boomer Sison's record for yards in a single season. He was uh, he's pretty good. Uh, good in the World League too, but uh, that doesn't mean you're ready for the NFL, my friend. Yeah, and he actually spent a lot of time as a backup in Seattle, and he kind of had that Jeff George look going for him, that kind of like creeper kind of vibe there. Yeah, he did. Yeah, he had that sweet kind of like uh, <laughs> sweet creeper stash that he had, like <laughs> '70s porn star stash, kind of like a Joe <laughs> Nash special. Right. Right. Yeah, then we have Rick Meyer. Oh, man, the hits, they just keep on coming, man. Rick Meyer was actually pretty decent his first year. Did he, like, break, like, some records for a rookie quarterback? Like, it was, like, one of the better rookie quarterback performances that first I'm gonna year. I'm going to have to trust you on that because, man, all I can remember about that guy is being angry, but you're probably right. Yeah. I just remember him doing those awesome commercials. Hey, right, this is Rick Meyer. Yeah. Come to, uh, he seems so uncomfortable in any of that, yeah. <laughs> he really was. He was so uncomfortable. Oh, he looked uncomfortable. He played uncomfortable. He made the fans feel uncomfortable. It was bad. It was just bad. I just remember that draft, man, that 93 draft. I was like, please, please let the Patriots somehow pick Rick Meyer. I want Drew Bledsoe. I do not want Rick Meyer, please. And of course that didn't happen. Don't get me started. <laughs> and then we had John Freeze. Oh, out of Idaho. Got a vandal in the house. Yeah. Listen to Northwest guy. Yeah, it's such a cool name. John it Deep is. Deep Freeze. Yeah. Yeah. Great name. Not the greatest player. I remember he had a pretty good arm, actually. He did. I remember him doing like relatively well as a backup in San Diego, if I'm not mistaken, before he came to us. Like he was definitely serviceable. It's just not yeah. the guy you want as your number one guy. Well, that's for sure. It's that era, man. It's that era. So not that uh, era. and then Painful. uh and then towards the later part of the 90s, it didn't end completely horribly because we had Warren Moon. So after doing his tour around North America, up in Canada and down in Houston, he circles back 
comes back up to Seattle. Came, came back, back home. Came back home. 1997, he had like 3,678 yards and 25 touchdowns. And then we had John Kitna. Good old John Kitna. See woo. That's right, baby. See woo in the house. One big cat. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, he had a, he had a few decent games, but again, he's just you know nothing spectacular, yeah. you know. So uh, yeah, and then we closed out the decade with Glenn Foley and your boy Brock Heward, nineteen ninety nine to uh, two thousand one. <laughs> <laughs> Good right. old Brock. Yep, yep. All right, so that was a great era, great era for the Seahawks in the nineties. A lot <sighs> of great. Great things happen in the 90s for the Seahawks. So painful to even remember, but I guess we wouldn't be where we're at without going through those experiences as well, so. Exactly. No one would pay to see you perform. <laughs>